So let's do this graphically now. If um, We're going to talk about describing the correlation graphically. So kind of talking about these lines that I've drawn in in the last video. right? And we actually call this a line of best fit, of best fit. Sometimes we call it a linear regression line. Sometimes we call it a least squares regression line. And it's, you know, all different names, but it all means the same thing. How can I, you know, physically show the strength or the model that this data is representing? And it's all an estimate. Um, but this is where this modeling comes into play of can I actually make a model out of the data I'm using and use that model um, to make predictions about other values that I don't have. So here's a table of data um, comparing math and physics grades. And we're going to use a GDC to find the regression equation. We're going to make a scatter plot. Um, and then using that best that line of best fit. So without even um, looking at the R value. Um, kind of making a guess based on how strong this correlation is. So this is one of those problems where you want to read through the whole problem first because in order to find the linear regression equation, you need to make a scatter plot, or you need to follow the steps that would involve making a scatter plot. And so here's how we're going to do that. So I'm going to enter in my data just like I had before when we talked about mean, median, mode, standard deviation, all of that. I'm going to go to stat, and I'm going to go to edit, and instead of entering in one column of data, I now have two columns that I need to enter in. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'll put my, maybe I'll put my math grades um, into L1. So 92, 91, 83, 83, 90, 81, 86, 88, uh, 96, 98, and 87. And then I'll arrow over to L2, my list 2 and enter in my physics data. So I've got 96, 87, 76, 85, 90, 82, 95, 97. Great, so I've got all my data here. So all I need to do to make my linear regression equation, if you remember, because it's linear, we're gonna think about our linear form, right, which is just uh, usually y equals mx plus b, or in this case, our coefficients will just be ax plus b. Well, to do that, I'm going to go to stat, calc, this calc menu. And actually, if you notice, I have two different choices for linear regression. Um, we're going to stick with ax plus b, just because that's the form that we're used to writing the linear equation in, right? Slope-intercept form, ax plus b. Um, if you poke through, right, you can see all the different other types of regressions, logistic, sine regu um, regression, a manual fit, quadratic, cubic, quartic, um, logarithmic, all sorts of different regression lines. Um, and that's something that you can choose actually based on um, the trend that you observe in your scatter plot. But for now in this class, in this section, we're really just going to deal with linear regression. Um, any other type of regression, if you choose to use it for your IA, would be something that you'd have to look into yourself. So my x values are in L1, my y values are in L2, so second L2 right here. I can go down to calculate. There's my A and B. So I would go ahead and enter that into, um, that would be my answer, right? I would take this and I'll show it back on the iPad um, when I come back to the iPad. And just to say this is 0.947x plus 3.68. You can see your r squared and your r um, present. But we're just going to ignore that for now just to try to follow um, what we were being asked to do before. So the next thing that our problem wanted us to do is generate a scatter plot on the GDC and insert the line of best fit from part A. So actually, instead of typing it in manually to y1, I'm actually going to go back to calc, back to my linear regression. And where it says store regression equation, we can actually access this y1, y2, like we would in our y equals menu. We can actually access that on our calculator in order to store the equation there as a variable. So I'm going to go to vars and yvars. 
and function and y1. So when I go to calculate this now, it's actually going to store my equation there. Sure enough, if I press y equals, there it is. Um, so let's view this. I'm going to go, I'm just going to double check my stat plot. So my stat plot is on, but the form is wrong. So I'm going to hit enter and just change my type of graph to a scatter plot. X list one, two, so that all looks good. And I'm going to press zoom and option number nine for stat. And you can see that the scatter plot is fitted um, to the proper window. And my linear regression equation is present as well, which makes this really nice and easy to look at. So this isn't something obviously they could assess on like an IB exam, but um, for the purpose right now of kind of seeing how we talk about the strength of this model, um, it's great practice. So what this says is, you know, our calculator fit a line to our data that it thinks best approximates um, an equation that we can use to estimate um, the data that we have. So this is our model. This is kind of our best guess for a model we can use to summarize the data and use um, using it to make predictions in the future. We want to, in part B of this problem, we'd ask to make a conjecture about the strength of the association. And so what I'm looking at is I see that there's, you know, a pretty clear positive trend. The points in my scatter plot are pretty close to the line, but they could be closer. Um, it's not perfect. Um, it's definitely not strong, but I wouldn't say it's weak. So I guess we'll call it um, moderate correlation. And sure enough, if I actually go back into my stat, calc, then reg, just so I can pull up this R value. 0.71 puts me right in my moderate range. So we would in fact call this moderate positive, R is positive here, so moderate positive correlation. Uh, by the way, I want to actually walk through, so my calculator, as you see here, automatically shows the R value, but sometimes calculators will not. So um, particularly if you were to reset your calculator before doing this. So in case if R squared and R doesn't show, don't show, the troubleshoot for this is to press second catalog, and you're going to scroll all the way down to, it says diagnostic on. I'm going to save myself some time. You see this D here? Just to save some scrolling time, we're going to go all the way down until we get to diagnostic on. Press enter, press enter, it says done. Um, and this will actually allow us to calculate R squared and R. So um, if you go through to do a problem and you notice that R squared and R are not present, um, this is how you would go about doing that and turning that on. So just your kind of troubleshooting method. So coming back to our work here on the scatter plot or on our on the iPad, uh, we've come up with our linear regression equation. We've come up with our correlation coefficient, which gives us that strength in association, right? Moderate positive, always using those two words um, to explain the correlation between the data. So now we're going to use this information. We say that a student earns an 85 as his final grade in math. Let's estimate his physics grade using the model and the data above. So remember, if you remember from our, um, sounds like our scatter plot, we used math as x and physics as y. I'm given x, I want to find y. So let's just make a substitution, 0.947 times 85 plus 3.68. So I'm just going to put this under my calculator. And I get 84.17. 175, so I guess we'll call it 18. Is this estimate reliable? Well, kind of, right? We have a moderate positive correlation. So it's definitely not a strong correlation. We would say that it's not the most reliable um, model that I could possibly have. So I would say that our results that we have here from this physics grade maybe isn't the best estimate of the student's actual physics grade. A student earns a 70 as her final grade in physics. Estimate her math grade. Well, here's a y and here's an x. So 70 equals 
3.65 plus 3.68. So divided by, did I do it right? Nope, there should be an x here. Sorry about that. So 3.68 divided by 0.947. And I get 70.03. Is this estimate reliable? Because of the correlation coefficient, we can still already say no. Our no is reinforced by the fact that 70 lies outside of the span of my physics grades, right? My physics grades fall somewhere in the range between, looks like 76 to 100. And 70 is not an element of that interval. So because we're trying to make estimates outside of my data that I've been given, it's already less reliable. So I'm gonna say, no, it's not reliable um, because 70 falls outside range of given Y values. So because we're trying to make predictions outside of the information I've been given, it's not as reliable because we don't know if this trend continues. So if we talk, let's talk about this a little more um, concretely. Suppose the X values in a bivariate data set range from A to B. We'll let P be the X value of a predicted point, right? So if P falls within this range, and I suppose this is somewhat true with the Y variables as well, um, if P falls within this interval from A to B, then we call it interpolation. So inter, think about the word introverted, right, within, same prefix. P falls within the data set. If it doesn't, we call it extrapolation. Again, again think about the word extroverted, same prefix. Um, it falls outside the span of the data set. When we talk about being accurate with our predictions and using the model to make predictions, the accuracy of interpolation depends on how strong the linear relationship is. It depends on our R value. If R is relatively low, then our um, interpolation is not going to be as reliable or as accurate. Right? Our estimate is not going to be as um, reliable or as accurate as we'd like it to be. The accuracy of extrapolation depends on this too, but it also assumes that the relationship identified extends beyond the predicted data, and this is risky. This is the problem. It's highly situation dependent. Just because this little portion of the data is linear does not mean that the rest of the data is gonna follow that pattern as well. We have to be careful with that. Um, because of this, we say that it's often unlikely that the data is reliable. So extrapolation can be tricky. Um, the stronger your linear relationship, the better cause you have of concluding that extrapolation will be reliable. But even so, you still should probably consider the fact that this pattern might not extend beyond the data in the way that we might expect it to. We just have to be careful.